All right, guys, so I'm finally gonna break down and uh, reveal the secret of the universe, or at least the keto universe, okay? So what is the biggest secret of the keto universe? Well, <laughs> recently I was reading this, this book in my spare time called Insulin Resistance. This is a textbook, okay? All the research on insulin resistance. Fascinating read. I agree with like most of it, but there's a couple points I don't, and I'll cover that in a minute. But I'm reading this and all of a sudden it was like, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I go, wow, most health problems, most common health problems, diseases and symptoms are directly caused by insulin resistance. Yet we are treating every single one of these conditions with a separate drug as if they are some separate problem and disease. I mean, check this out. Insulin resistance directly causes metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, triglycerides, belly fat, a fatty liver, diabetes, okay? And having diabetes causes kidney damage and kidney failure eventually, uh, peripheral neuropathy, all sorts of neurological problems, including problems with dementia in the brain, uh, heart problems, um, eye problems, cataracts, glaucoma, retinopathy, all sorts of problems with the eye. Uh, and then the heart, we have clotting occurs because of this. That's what leads to strokes, okay? Placking, arrhythmias, atrial fib, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, the type of cholesterol that's sticky that forms a plaque, and high blood pressure. And then we have all the inflammatory conditions of your joints, arthritis, bursitis, tendinitis, rheumatoid, osteo, uh, autoimmune conditions. It's the inflammation that causes the damage. And then we have inflammation inside the artery, which then leads to the placking. We have inflammation that occurs in the digestive tract, Crohn's, diverticulitis, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, inflammation that then causes fibrosis or scarring or cirrhosis in your liver. And then we have all the problems in the brain, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, seizures, cognitive issues like brain fog, forgetfulness, lack of focus, lack of concentration. And then we have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is high level of androgens in a female body. Normally females should not have high levels of androgen. What does that create? Facial hair, body hair, loss of hair on your head, deeper voice, belly fat, and the list goes on and on. But in a male body, insulin resistance will decrease testosterone okay, and increase estrogen. So we have this opposite effect where insulin resistance in a female body causes high androgens and in a male body will decrease androgens. And then there's a whole list of additional side effects from this alone, okay? And when we have insulin resistance, we're usually a pre-diabetic where we have high levels of sugar. And yes, cancer lives on sugar. And not to mention obesity, okay? Insulin resistance is a primary driver of obesity. Why? Because the hormone insulin is the main fat storage hormone. Now, what is insulin resistance? Basically, your cells are rejecting insulin, okay? They're no longer absorbing insulin anymore. What causes this? Chronic exposure to insulin. Now, if we take it back a little bit further, what would cause high levels of insulin is basically high carbohydrate diets, chronic eating, like in frequent eating, as in eating six times a day with all the snacks and everything, uh, will cause this. And cortisol will increase the production of insulin because with cortisol, which is a stress hormone, it actually breaks down protein and it stimulates insulin. And, and a lot of the damage from high levels of cortisol is really high levels of insulin. So high cortisol eventually causes insulin resistance itself. Now, if we look at insulin like a key, okay, which has a function of allowing fuel to enter the cell to regulate blood sugars. It's a master whole body glucose control, okay? And it also controls amino acid absorption into the cells as well as other nutrients in the cell. Now, what happens when you have insulin resistance, okay, you have one part of the body that's not getting insulin, Okay, so there's a feedback loop that comes around that causes your pancreas to make massive amounts of insulin. So when you have insulin resistance, you have a combination between 
insulin deficiency and a massive spike in insulin in certain other parts of the body. The massive spike of insulin causes stuff like fatty liver and obesity, but the deficiency of insulin also creates problems, especially in your brain, because insulin, believe it or not, is an anti-inflammatory hormone. So when you have insulin resistance, you have now you have certain parts of your body that don't get enough insulin, you start getting inflammation. So a lot of the inflammation that occurs with this is really occurring because of, of a deficiency of insulin in certain parts of your body. I mean, let's just take the brain, for example. When you have Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, there's something very unique about these two right here. In your nerve cells, you will see a severe deficiency of glucose in the cell. Why? Because there's not enough insulin because of insulin resistance to allow fuel to go into the nerve cells, okay? And they die. And so one of the treatments for Alzheimer's is an insulin nasal spray, which sprays insulin right up through your sinuses into the brain. And it shows some good results with dementia. The problem is eventually it keeps creating more insulin resistance because this is caused by continuous exposure to insulin, okay? Now there's another treatment for arrhythmias involving giving a patient insulin into the heart because it can increase the electrical activity and increase the mobilization of electrolytes. Why? Because insulin is involved in the absorption of electrolytes. So you can see some of these treatments are designed to bypass uh, what's really happening, insulin resistance. All right, so I wanna come back to this book for a second and just touch on one thing. If you look at um, the section where they're talking about the cause of insulin resistance, there's one area that I highly disagree with, and I'll tell you why, it, because it talks about eating saturated fats will cause insulin resistance, okay? And this is something you'll see in the news. Oh yeah, avoid saturated fats or you're gonna get diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. So I pulled a string and found the study that they're using to base this information on. Of course, it was a, a rodent study, okay? And as I try to find the study, you, it's not readily available. You have to buy it. It's $47 for the study, okay? But you can rent it for $7, which I did, and I'll show you right here. It's called High Fat Diet Induced Insulin Resistance. Lessons and Implications from Animal Studies, okay? And lo and behold, if you see what they fed the mice, it was a high fat diet. If you then look up what that high fat diet consists of, it's not just a high fat diet. It's a high fat plus high carbohydrate diet. And we already know if you combine high carbs with high fat, you get a massive increase of insulin. So that fact basically invalidates this study completely, making this data incorrect. The truth is that saturated fats have a very low effect on insulin. What has a massive effect is the carbohydrates. And that brings me back to the biggest secret of the keto universe, and that is this. All these side effects from insulin resistance are treated with separate medications as if they're their own disease, not being caused by something. And to put the icing in the cake, the diet recommended to resolve these conditions are a high carbohydrate diet, the exact thing that causes in the first place. So what is the significance of that data? Well, it tells us the importance of keto and intermittent fasting is way more than we thought because it directly targets this one condition right here, which indirectly can help you with all of these. Thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Daily notifications, that sounds weird. Well, I'll just remind you on a daily basis. How about that?